and welcome back. Today we are going to discuss gear. Uh, this should be my last video before we head out on the trail. We are going to be heading out in about just about a week now. I am presently in New Brunswick, so I'll be heading south, southbound, um, starting in roughly the first weekish of June. And the bugs here are lovely as you can probably tell, so I'm well prepared for what's going to be coming up. So, if you're new to this channel, welcome. Uh, if you've seen me before, this is my final gear that I'm planning to take southbound on the AT. So let's get started. I'm going to kind of just unpack what I've got. It's not entirely packed the way I would have it right now because um, we're just getting everything finalized. So, this is my pack. I've got a Z-Packs uh, Arc Ultra, so it means it's the slightly thicker Dyneema. It's a 60 liter pack. Um, it's a small, so whether it actually holds 60 liters, I'm not sure. I, I'm not planning to fill it, but I wanted the extra space, uh, particularly for the 100 mile wilderness when we have to have a very large food carry. Although I do plan to be taking advantage of the food drop. So that is the backpack. It, uh, I have a phone pocket on it, as well as a small hip belt and two pockets here. These pockets are great for snacks and items that I'll be using quite frequently. I have a bandana, uh, which is essentially used for everything, mostly just my nose when it runs. I've got my Garmin InReach. I also, we'll just start unpacking from the outside, so let's go from there. Um, I'm going to start with this Gossamer Gear 1 8 of an inch pad. I use this underneath my sleeping bag. Uh, you can watch that in the big 3-4 video. Um, it's just to protect my sleeping pad and add a little grippiness so I don't slide all over the place. And I also use it as my yoga mat for stretching before and after, so an important piece of gear. I can use it as a sit pad, but I prefer to use this little guy. I just got it off of Amazon. It's super lightweight, adds a little more cushy to my bum, and it's just a little less fragile than the, the eighth of an inch. I also have on the outside of my pack, my rain gear. Um, it's the AT, it's gonna be wet. I have opted to go for a poncho as opposed to a suit. Um, it's the frog tog, so super cheap. If it doesn't work out, I'll just pick up something else along the way. But right now, that's what I'm choosing. Because we're kind of going in June, beginning of summer, the first part of it, I don't really need, I think, it for warmth, per se, just to keep me dry. And I'd like the airflow underneath it. So I'm taking the frog togs. I also have camp shoes sort of. Um, they're just, they're water shoes. I got them off of Amazon. They're lightweight, a little bit of a grip. I don't know how well they're going to hold up. I honestly, I don't have a lot of faith in them. So we'll see if they don't work out. They'll go. Um, but they don't weigh much. Next, I have my poop kit, which lives on the outside of my bag here. You probably have seen this before if you've watched my How to Poop in the Woods video. I just carry a bidet. I like the bidet so I don't have to carry toilet paper or wet wipes. It's just a squeeze bottle I got off of Amazon and I use it for number one and number two. I carry some soap in here so I can wash my hands. I prefer to use hand soap over sanitizer just because it just keeps you cleaner and the AT has a lot of water so I'm not too worried about being too dry. I do have a Trowel, a Vargo Dig Dig. It's a little heavier than the Deuce of Spades. <sighs> Mostly just because the AT has a lot of roots. So if I'm going to need to actually dig into the ground, this will work better. There are a lot of privies, so hopefully I won't need to use this at all. But if I do, at least I know it works. And of course, I do carry a little bit of toilet paper. So that is my bathroom bag. Lives on the outside. As well on the outside, my luxury item is a mug. It's not a collapsible mug. It's a lightweight mug, but um, I just like to have my breakfast and coffee at the same time. And I'll carry the weight. It's my luxury item. On 
on the outside I carry an Nalgene bottle, which I know most people don't carry those. They carry these smart water bottles. Um, I will be carrying one of those with the sport top. I carry this just for extra purposes uh, that I can, if need be, for um, to heat myself, to heat my sleeping bag, uh, to use as a bit of a clothes dryer. I do have Raynaud's, so it's kind of an extra protection from my um, health issues. So I do carry it. If, if it turns out I really don't need it, I can always ditch it. It's it's the HDMe uh, kind, so it's a little bit lighter than the heavier duty Nalgene, but again, not very heavy. I'll also be carrying a one liter smart water bottle with a sport top because I don't like to reach into these pockets for my water bottle. I will have a tube system, which I don't have set up at the time, but really it's just, you put the tube in, put it in the bottom, and I'll wrap it along the top so I can use it as a straw because otherwise I won't drink enough water and not drinking enough water and hiking is a big problem, especially when you're sweating out all your electrolytes. So I will uh, have that little setup. As well, what lives on the outside is my Kulu cloth, which goes with my bathroom bag. Um, I can use this uh, to just kind of dry myself off after I use my bidet. Um, finally, I have my water filter. I'm using the Cadine Be Free, one liter. I like this. I've used it for quite some time. It works well, so I'm gonna continue to use it. Now, uh, this won't be on my pack, but it will be on Jeff's pack, and it is our tent. We have the Z-Pax Triplex. So it's a three-person tent. Uh, Jeff is six foot two, so he needs the extra space. And I like to spread out and starfish, so I need the extra space. So hopefully we can find good campsites with lots of flat ground because it does have a larger footprint. Um, so stealth camping is gonna be a bit of a challenge, but it fits us right now. So that's what we're gonna do. And Jeff will be carrying that. It is a trekking pole tent. The trekking poles I'm planning to use are these. They are the um, the Lecky uh, Carbon Women's version. I've been using these for a while. I quite like them. And so I'm gonna continue to rock those. I do have a set of gloves. They're not waterproof. Um, so come the end of the trail, when we start getting back into cooler weather, these probably are not gonna cut it, but for now they should be all right. They're just, um, mountain equipment co-op almost waterproof so they will do okay in relatively wet but a, a solid downpour and whatnot they're gonna wet out for sure but it's just to kind of keep my hands for the first little bit from the rocks and whatnot because going down Katahdin and through Rocksylvania and all the rest of it is I've been told about the rocks and I'd like something to protect my hands and Again, to keep them warm in the morning um, because of rain nodes, it doesn't take much to get my hands cold and this will be, hopefully work well, but we'll find out. Um, also, we'll just, we'll go through the pockets quickly. What, <laughs> one thing I'll have in my pockets are my sunglasses. Clearly I have, I wear glasses and I have prescription sunglasses. So I'll be taking those with me because um, I can't see without them and I do need them. Not bringing an extra pair, I don't wear contacts, can't stand them. And I don't know how you can keep your hands that clean, but, so I like my glasses. Mostly these bags are gonna be used for snacks. I do carry a Nightcore NU25, I think it is. It's the USB rechargeable. This works really well for me. Sit in that pocket. Again, like I said, this'll be kind of my snack bag during the day. So, now, because it's bug season, I'll be carrying this right up front with me. This is the Sea to Summit a bug hat, which I will probably get a lot of use out of, uh, at least for the first month. I will be carrying some sunscreen up front because I burn easily. Uh, some chapstick with sunscreen in it. And after bite, because I'm gonna get bitten and that's gonna protect me from wanting to rip off my skin. So that's mostly what's gonna be carried in there. This will be my phone pack, where I'll probably keep my sunglasses as well. So that's everything on the outside of my pack. On the inside of my pack, on top will probably be um, my food bag. 
So I have, it's not full yet, um, this ultralight Dyneema bag for my bear hang. It's pretty lightweight, so that's what I'll be taking. Inside my cook kit is my 750 ml Tokes uh, cooking pot. I just have an elastic holding it together uh, with a little lid. I have a little Amazon stove, no name version. I think it's 20 bucks. It's been working well. It's got a little lighter built into it. So I've had no issues with it. It's the isobutane fuel that you can get pretty much everywhere that uh, you, most stoves will use. As well as I have one of those um, Swiss, Swiss, Swedish cloths. Um, they're just the cellulose uh, cloth that I used for cleaning pots and just kind of washing up afterwards. They're very lightweight, reusable, biodegradable. You can throw them in the washing machine. They last forever. And I just, I like to keep things a little cleaner. So that's what I have for that. Um, this is my bear bag. I don't have the actual um, rope in it right now. Jeff has the rope, um, but I do have a little toggle in there, kind of uh, instead of using a stick for when I hang the bear, which I still have to practice. I think that's sucking pretty badly right now. I have a Ziploc, a Rusty Ziploc bag, which I'll be using to food soak in. Uh, just so that I can save on fuel. I have a little wash pot here. Uh, if you've watched my meal prep video, you've probably seen me pull this out before. It's just a little Dyneema dog bowl. So it uh, weighs like 0.2 ounces, holds water. I can clean up and dispose of my wastewater. Um, my Tokes long handle spoon for the ready-made meals mostly and just to keep my hands clean. Various Ziploc bags which I will be using uh, for my food storage. I like to put every day's worth of food in so I know how many days worth of food I have and I take it out of the packaging that I get from the store so I don't have to worry about bringing extra garbage out. And I do carry, I know it seems weird, a little <laughs> cutting board mostly just to protect myself from off the picnic tables and whatnot if we're using keep me from cutting my fingers and everything clean because I know a lot of norovirus is running around and it seems to follow the bubbles we're going southbound so that probably won't be an issue for us but just in case so that's my food bag next in my bag I have one of my ditty bags I have the six moon design little bags I because this bag is simply just one big hole it's got no pockets or anything for distribution of, and organization. And I'm not a great organizer, so if I can just leave it in one spot, all of it, I know roughly where to find it, I'm pretty happy. So this is pretty much my storage for everything else. So in here I have a little notebook, which I can write down um, everything I need to write down, keep track of, of things. I have a small towel. Just a little camp towel, uh, Amazon special. Don't know how much that costs. I have one of the raw ology cork balls. Very important. Uh, I'm, I get stiff. <laughs> I enjoy these things. They're wonderful for getting uh, muscle cramps out uh, after a long day's hike. I will be carrying some body glide, some hand lotion. I have another little Dyneema bag. And this, if you watch my hygiene video, you will recognize to wash myself with. And again, another one of those Swedish cloths. Oh, the bugs are getting in my head. Uh, some KT tape. This is just a little bag of lotion, tea tree oil, Vaseline, extra Q-tips. And it's a little hygiene bag. It's, it's what I like to use. It seems to work for me. I will be carrying earplugs uh, with the little tie upon it. Jeff is a snorer. He tries very hard not to be, but he is. And so are lots of other people. So I'm going to need these if I want to keep sane and have some sleep. So those are very important. My little toothbrush kit, toothpaste, toothbrush, dental floss, basic stuff. And finally, I'm carrying a flex tail, uh, 
tiny pump for my sleeping pad because I don't like to blow it up because if I'm putting in my hot air into the pad, it's it'll get moldy on it eventually and it takes forever and at the end of a long hike, I'm I want to be lazy and, and not do that. So I'm just going to bring this. So this is my other luxury item and it's for Jeff and I. So I just carry that in a little baggie, which clearly I check around. So that is my little ditty bag. Next, I have my first aid kit. Um, I've gone through this before. It's just, it's a, some basic stuff, some bandages, some medications, standard ibuprofen, uh, Benadryl, Imodium, Tylenol, uh, gravel, some Luco tape for blisters, very important. Yes, I carry a full container of uh, antibiotic ointment because I cut myself a lot. Um, some Steri strips, um, just one hot hand in case I do need it. The very important tick key because um, ticks are vicious this time of year. I also carry nail clippers and a small pocket knife, which I don't have in here at the moment. In fact, I'm not quite sure where it is, but it's the little um, Swiss Army one, just the one with the scissors, the tiny knife, and tweezers on it. Um, so yeah, that's my first aid kit. All right, moving into the real interior bag. Everything that I want to keep safe and truly dry, because although this is water resistant, it's not really fully waterproof. Um, so I carry a Nyla Flume bag, uh, which is just this plastic thing. It works really well. And so that's what I keep all of my clothing and my sleeping bag in so that it stays dry. Because the AT is damp and moist. So this I know people don't carry stuff sacks, but I, I like this one. These are those, again, the Six Moon Design ones. This stuff sack also is a pillow for me, so it works out really well, but it also carries all of my clothing. So this is most of the clothing I'm going to pack. I'm not going to start off wearing these things. Well, I mean, I will at night, but um, I'm going to start off wearing pants. The pants I'm going to start off with are... I don't even know if there's a brand name in them anymore. Coden? I don't know. I got them at Winners. They're a really lightweight pant. Um, and they're really comfy. And they have elasticized at the bottom, so to help keep ticks out, um, which is good. But when it gets warmer, and it's going to get warmer, I'm going to be wearing some shorts. So I'll be wearing my Patagonia shorts here. Um, during the... Oh, I should grab my clothes here. You can tell I'm really organized. Um, I'm just going to be wearing a just, a just a sports bra. I think it's a Lululemon. Uh, it's comfortable. It works for me. I wear a sun shirt because I burn really easily. This is a cool uh, SPF 50 shirt with a little hoodie and a zipper so I can keep the sun off and the bugs out. So that works for me. I will be sporting a ball hat because I will probably be tying my hair back. Uh, this is a running cap, again from Lulu, Lululemon. Um, I will have a buff for keeping the hair off, a hat, the mosquitoes, what have you. Everyone needs a good buff. My mid layer is going to be this little fleecy I have, it's an Arteryx something or other. It's just a lightweight fleece. I think it's, I mean, it's a bit heavy. It's eight ounces, so it's not the lightest of things, but I have it. I own it. And it uh, hides dirt really well, too. <laughs> so that's my mid layer. Um, for the nights and when I get off of camp for my puffy, I have a Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer. Um, they're pretty standard down filled so I want to keep this dry because it's down and I do want to keep it dry um, I do carry this little windbreaker and it seems silly to bring an extra windbreaker if you have rain gear but my rain gear being a poncho is really just kind of a floppy thing 
I like this very lightweight uh, Patagonia Houdini. So this will kind of, for light showers, it's really good for just putting on top of one layer. It actually keeps me really warm so I don't have to over layer. Um, so this is actually one of my favorite pieces of gear I like to take hiking. And it packs into its own little pocket. It's super lightweight. And I really like this thing. So that's coming with me. I will be having uh, three pairs in total of darn tough socks. Um, two to switch out and then one to sleep in because I like to keep uh, the ones I sleep in very dry. They're just the um, micro crew because I don't like them too short on the ankles. I'm trying to keep the ticks out and my ankles from being attacked by twigs and whatnot. So I carry those. Um, as for what else we got here? Underwear, something in here. Ah. Okay. Well, I'm carrying some underwear. Oh, there we are. <laughs> I have some ex officio underwear and two pairs a pair of boxers, a pair of bikini, and I also carry a smart wool bikini. I like. The, the boxer is more for sleeping when it gets hot in the summertime and if I'm getting extra chafing um, when I'm walking or if I need something to throw on when I'm doing my laundry. So it's just kind of a really very lightweight, quick drying pair of underwear that uh, Jeff had bought for himself and they sent him the wrong size so I kept it. Oh yeah, here we are. So little boxers, very handy. Two, s and there's the extra pairs of darn tough socks to sleep in. I will be starting with, uh, what is this? Cloud Veil Merino Wool. Uh, I think I got it at Costco. I don't know, but it's comfortable and it works. So I'm going to take that. I also have uh, Long Johns. These are the Capilene Air, I believe. Uh, from Patagonia. They're a little on the thin side, but they're very warm. I'm only sleeping in them. They're not very durable, so they'll probably make one trip and then they'll be destroyed because that's what happens. And just to be safe in case it does cool down, I will be taking a smart wool beanie with me um, for at night. And when it gets cold, if I need it, I have that. So that's pretty much my clothing. Next I have one of the big three. So my sleeping bag, which I'm sure is going to be total overkill, um, but I'm going to carry it anyway. This is my monster. This is the Western Mountaineering Versalite uh, 10 degree bag. I like it. It is a sleeping bag. It's a mommy bag. Probably for the most part, I'll just leave it wide open because and treat it like a quilt. I don't actually like mommy bags. I like them if I'm cold and I can actually put them on and keep me warm, but I don't think it's going to be that cold. And if it is, I have that extra option of closing it up. But for the most part, it's probably just going to be a quilt. But it is so warm and so comfy and I love it. So that's what's coming with me and also coming with me because I, as I've mentioned, I have Raynaud's and I get cold feet and hands is I have my little booties. Uh, these are goose gear uh, down booties. They weigh like an ounce and a half, I think. Um, I got them in red so I could see them in the bottom of my bag but they're very, very warm and they will keep my to toes nice and toasty warm. And again, probably overkill, but clearly my fear is I don't want to be cold. So I'm packing it thoroughly. Uh, I also have a C2 Summit Arrows pillow. Now I've said I'm using a packing cube sort of as a pillow, but I'm a side sleeper. So I need something between my knees to keep my hips level. Um, so that I'm not in pain in the morning, or at least not more pain. So I do carry this extra little pillow. It's super lightweight. So that comes with me. And finally, we have my sleeping pad. 
This is a bit of a monster to go with this monster. It is my big Agnes Rapide SL. The Teat <laughs> sleeping pad. It's an R value of 4.2, I believe. So it's warm enough for the three seasons. Um, it's rectangular, so it's great for a side sleeper. It's got slightly higher edges, so I don't feel like I'm falling off. It is not the lightest um, by any stretch. It's 17 and a half ounces. So as far as sleeping pads go, yeah, it's a bit of a beast, but sleep is very important to me and I need it. So this is coming with me. And obviously I'm carrying a repair kit to go with that. And that's my bag. I don't think I have anything else in there to show you. Um, what I'll be wearing on my feet are the Hoka Speed Goats. So I normally have been rocking ultras, but I'm a heel striker, so I've had some issues with that. So I'm trying these out. Um, they've been quite comfortable so far, and I've thrown in some separate insoles, the, the Super Feet um, Hiking tra or Trailblazers um, insoles to go in there. So hopefully that combination will work well for me, uh, at least for the start where I'll be doing lots of um, rock climbing and I'll need some extra grip and cushion. So that is all of my gear. Um, I don't think I missed anything. So finally, I uh, the last item on my list are my electronics. I will be taking a anchor power pa pack, an anchor power pack. Um, this is a 20,000 milliamp pack. Uh, for the most part, it probably will be a bit overkill, but particularly for the um, 100 mile, I will need some extra juice because I really won't have anywhere to, to charge uh, my phone. I'll be filming most of this on my iPhone 13, uh, so I'll be using that as well as I have a GoPro uh, Hero Black 10, which I'll also be filming on with a uh, just a foam wind muff to keep the uh, the wind down. So we'll see how that works. Uh, aside from that, it'll be carried in this little Dyneema bag with my wall charger, um, some cords, and my basic headphones, so nothing fancy there. I will also be carrying a small tripod, um, which my phone is on right now. So it's just a little mini Joby ones that I can like wrap around in trees and whatnot, nothing fancy. So that is pretty much my gear. Thank you for watching. If you liked this, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe. And we're gonna get started on our AT hike. So the next video you catch will be on day one, hiking up Katahdin, going southbound. So I hope to see you there. Thanks again.